What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're going to go over the 6-7 Power Stroke Coffee Table Book. This is going to be for the 2020 model year and is very, very packed full with information. It's 130 pages long and I want to go over it, uh, not in full depth, but quickly go over it with you guys and show you so many of the great things that are on this engine. Alright guys, let's check this out. Guys, thanks so much for coming back tonight, hanging out with me. Uh, this is uh, something I've been looking for for a little bit. I have every other coffee table book for all the other diesels, and uh, finally, finally, we have the brand new 2021. So uh, I wanted to go over this with you guys, so you all can know exactly uh, what this engine looks like. And for those of you that only see this engine underneath your hood, it not being a truck, uh, you can kind of uh, have a little more appreciation for what I have to deal with every time uh, I am gonna be servicing your guys' vehicle. So uh, quickly here in the table of contents, it's just gonna go over the engine, the cooling system, the lubrication system, air management, fuel, electrical exhaust, and the special service tools uh, that we need uh, in order to work on these trucks. Um, basically, you guys already know what it is. It is a 6.7 Power Stroke diesel, um, and for this year, the 2020, the one I got, uh, it has been upgraded. So uh, we have a, a different fuel system now. Uh, the uh, previous ones were only making about 29-ish thousand PSI. Right now, this engine is going to be putting out 36,000 PSI. Uh, a little bit a higher uh, fuel injection system pressure and um, the precise calibration and designing that went into these injectors, uh, which we'll cover in the in the fuel system part, uh, is is high tolerance. And I cannot stress to you guys how important it is for, for fuel filters on, on these particular high pressure fuel systems. So, um, uh, we do have a, a new turbocharger. Uh, also, am going to be talking about their strengthened cylinder block heads, their connecting rods. We have some different pistons in this truck, and we are going to be producing 475 horsepower. And I know you guys all heard it boast when it came out, it was going to be 1050. 1,050 foot-pounds of torque. So that is definitely uh, something way cool uh, that uh, when we got these 2020s out that everybody was uh, ranting and raving about. So here on this page, when we're making that 475 horsepower, it's gonna be at 2,600 RPM. And uh, along with the uh, torque, you guys can see that RPM output. We have that electronically controlled VGT turbo. You guys remember it was all oil. If you uh, remember the video that I made, I'll put a link in the description for the uh, turbocharger I replaced on that 550 uh, with its uh, electronically controlled actuator. Guys, come down here and look at the lube system capacity including filter also have our firing order don't usually use the firing order too much um uh, obviously back in the early 2000s and everything that was in the late 90s you know i would definitely uh, be asking myself with the firing order when we had the spark plug wires and whatnot but it's definitely information good to know uh, for you guys that are DIYers, if you're going to be wondering what cylinder is which, right here is the front of the engine. This is where the turbo sits. So we are going to always start bank one, cylinder one. Bank one has always got cylinder one. Uh, and it's numbered from front to back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, something that we grow accustomed to uh, every day, knowing which injector is and Blah, 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 blah. We're moving on to oil. Engine, viscosity grades. We have a few different kinds we can pick from. Um, I was just sent some 0W40 AMS oil. 
Uh, I am looking forward to using that. We have some uh, materials from them we're going to go over in another video uh, regarding oil bypass systems for the 6.7. So I'm really excited to talk about that as well. Um, but you can see the temperatures. Uh, if you guys are in the cold climates, warm climates, make sure uh, you guys are going to be picking the correct oil uh, for your climate. Um, and then also note uh, what it's going to be talking about, noting severe operating conditions and if you're going to be uh, operating in that manner to change your intervals and adjust accordingly um, and noting that an hour of idling is equivalent to 30 miles of driving. So you may want to change your maintenance regimen based on said requirements. Another thing that we have to worry about when working on all these 6.7s and the fuel system components and the engine components is the one-time use fasteners and we are always indicated in the shop manual uh, by these notations with colors and the trash can to indicate to us that we are going to discard and no longer use that bolt requiring a new one because they are all torqued to yield. That bolt tightens, it stretches once it reaches it reaches its final torque and then uh, our, our tightening sequence has been completed. So the guys over at Ford, the Ford team over in the customer service division, uh, the people who are making our workshop manuals, our, our technical side, engineering side, uh, I, I definitely want to give those guys a round of applause for uh, not only their hard work with putting together this awesome booklet with the colors and, and even in the workshop manual denoting um, uh, what to reuse and what not. It was never like this. Um, it has come such a long way uh, since I have been growing up in the game and the pictures were never like this. So it has really, 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 really made uh, our job uh, just that much easier when trying to uh, find out, you know, uh, where this bolt is going or what the lengths are and, you know, they're pretty good with with uh, putting that stuff there even in the in the parts catalog so definitely a big thumbs up to them uh, for putting all this together for us over here it's going to talk about some of the engine kind of the engine component locations um, I won't go over too much of this uh, you guys can pause this at your leisure and see uh, exactly what but I went over this in a uh, previous video uh, with a 650 750 and a pickup truck to, talking about the difference in the 6.7s and what is actually under the hood. What are we looking at? What is this big hunk of aluminum on the passenger side of my engine? That is the EGR cooler. Um, and I went over that and talked about you know what each of those things were. And, and obviously, uh, this is all for emissions and, and, and what that functions and plays a role with how the owner is going to have to take care of their vehicle. So it was definitely good, good information. Uh, here's the back of the vehicle back of the vehicle here's the back of the engine oil filter you put that in relation to where everything is you know here's your starter um, your crankshaft position sensor I don't know if anybody's ever uh, noted where that is um, but it's in the back and that's probably why you can't see it because you didn't know it was in the back moving right along uh, it talks about the cylinder heads cylinder head bolts are torqued to yield they cannot be reused and it says the left side cylinder head attaches with 23 head bolts while the right attaches with 22. This is my favorite engine, the 6.7 of all, all, out of all the diesels uh, that have been in Ford pickup trucks. This is my favorite and I hope is your favorite too because it makes awesome power. Um, the reliability, you guys got to check out that million mile uh, engine the truck rather that came through uh, my shop. Uh, it was definitely something to talk about uh, just on his his maintenance uh, regimen. And here is the piston. So this is a big, big thing uh, coming from the older 6.7s from, from 11 through 19, I guess, um, uh, to the 20 has now received the all steel piston. And look how short this skirt is. Like we have barely anything here compared to the older uh, piston where it was all, you know, one, one piece didn't have this, this uh, gap here in the middle. Definitely a different looking piston. Uh, they still have the oil jets just like the other ones did. I had a 7.3 that actually one of the, uh, one of the like brazing uh, welds or whatever uh, broke off and this was actually floating down in the oil pan 
um, and you know what you have to do to take the oil pan off. So that was kind of a, a job that I'll, I'll never forget. Here's a picture of the connecting rod. Connecting rod's a connecting rod. But, uh, we definitely have a, a, a different length a connecting rod comparing to the previous models. Coming over here to the crankshaft, says the crankshaft is a forged micro alloy medium carbon steel. An undercut rolled fillet radius is present on each journal and the crankshaft pins are fully lightened. I don't know how that compares to the previous crankshaft, but this right here is, uh, I don't know if this is gonna be what's gonna be driving the oil pump, but the oil pump might be underneath. We're gonna see that here, I don't know yet. Um, and the cam, the cam could be here on top, so this, this gear could actually now be doing two things. But uh, like I said, we're gonna find out here as we keep rolling. Camshaft, there we go. See if we can zoom into this picture is kind of what I was thinking. So we got the camshaft here, high pressure fuel pump, and then I don't know what would be driving this oil pump down here, but this is definitely different uh, compared to the old ones. And there's no slide in this upper pan out like we were used to. The engine's going to have to come way, way up uh, in order just to to get around how low this oil pump is gonna be hanging in the uh, upper oil pan. So that's definitely a pain in the butt. I know it was done for a reason. I'm hoping I'm not gonna to have to take my upper oil pan out to fix my oil leak, but we are gonna find out. Flex plate, back of the engine, pretty normal. Same compared to the other ones. Uh, see what it talks about the lower and upper oil pans here. It says the oil pan. Uh, is a two-piece oil pan assembly that seals the lower engine. The upper oil pan acts as a block stiffener, increasing lower engine block rigidity. It's going to talk about its uh, mounting location for the oil cooler on the side. Um, the upper oil pan seals to the block and now with a non-reusable gasket. So you guys can see part number one. Uh, right here on the left and it's pointing at this gasket now so there's no more silicone I'm sure there's some silicone here in the t-joint areas like you know there are on gas and or diesel but the gasket is not silicone it is a non reusable looks like probably like a rubbery metal gasket combo um, and then it just it notes right here that the lower pan mounts to the upper pan and seals using RTV Drain plug, oil cooler, same old, same old. Uh, if you guys look at the side of the engine, though, we have some we have some more stuff going on here with a transmission cooler uh, or pump rather on the new 10 speed. So that's something we have to work around. Engine cooling system, big circuit, a lot of stuff going on. Primary radiator, secondary radiator. Uh, it's got a little notation here. This is where the power steering cooler is. So if anybody's standing in the front of their truck, it's going to be right here uh, up on the driver's side, uh, just inside of the driver's side headlight. Each cooling system does not intermix. It is independent and it has its own radiator. It's got uh, belt driven. It has two coolant pumps, which are belt driven and thermostats and everything, degas bottles for all those. Uh, got various sensors in there to check uh, temperatures and, and everything. Monitor the cabin. And then both cooling systems use these quick Disconnects, we don't really have the worm style worm clamps anymore. Everything's beginning, uh, being switched over to these quick disconnects, which now we have serviceable O-rings in them. So pretty sweet to just remove and replace the O-rings if we're doing repairs. Um, and we're going to be using that new Motocraft yellow coolant, which I'm going to go over in another video uh, because I think it's something we really need to talk about so you guys all know uh, what is up with the coolant. I get asked about it a lot. Uh, my friend Tom Brown, he gets uh, uh, asked and emailed and called about it all the time uh, regarding cooling systems. So again, I'm not going to uh, go in depth with this. You guys can look at this uh, at your own time and pause this. It's really, really good, great information. Moving through to the front cover, primary coolant pump. ECT1, primary thermostats, showing you guys all where those are. The opening temperatures are staggered with the rear thermostat opening it up at 194 and the front thermostat opening up at 201. I get asked about that quite often. The primary thermostat is located in the coolant crossover at the front of the engine and contains two thermostatic devices in one assembly. So I guess they're calling one 
uh, the front and the rear, and it has two different temperatures that's going to regulate the temperature with with throughout the engine. Engine oil cooler, we kind of looked at that already. Uh, EGR cooler, that's that big hunk of aluminum sitting on the passenger side valve cover. Uh, the cooling fan, uh, the Vistronic cooling fan. Uh, it looks similar, it's a little different, but uh, it is still uh, functions the same as it did in the previous model years. The thing that changed big time for the 2020s is the transmission cooler, the 10R140, the trans cooler is now down underneath the bell housing and the oil pan. It was uh, not too bad to do. I had to replace a 10 speed and a 7.3. Um, what I wound up doing was just disconnecting this and allowing it to actually flip down underneath the oil pan and bungee corded it to the axle and it was just completely out of my way. Uh, just something else we got to work around <clears throat> uh, with these uh, new things that they're adding on. Block heater, you guys have seen the video uh, that I have on that. Check out the cooling system flows for both the for the powertrain secondary cooling system and it goes through and lists the components here on the right. Charge air cooler, we're going over a video with that. Please, please, please do not use stop leak in these trucks. And I'm going to show you why. Mario, thank you for the uh, much needed donated transmission cooler. That also will go through trans cooler, this, the fuel cooler. These are all the things that are controlled by the secondary radiator uh, system. The secondary cooling system and it goes through this radiator and you can see here's a thermostat for the secondary uh, system right here on the driver's side end tank of the radiator. Uh, moving right along, we have the belt-driven secondary coolant pump that sits right here on the passenger side of the engine, right here uh, above the belt tensioner. Again, it has quick disconnect hoses that we are able to uh, remove without any hose clamps. Oil flow, everything that's going to be pretty much touching oil. You guys can see the main, main bearings and all the bolts and everything. That's actually a pretty cool picture. I don't know if you guys can see if that's nice and clear for you guys, but that is really, really cool. You guys over at Ford did a really, really great job making this um, for us to all see and 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 take note. Okay, so here's the where the crank would be. Okay, so the crank gear would be sitting here. So here's that gear I was talking about. Remember for the oil pump? So I think that crank gear is actually doing two things. It's providing... Uh, the spinning force needed to run that oil pump. Pretty cool. Now you know, knowing's half the battle. So now that we know what, what the heck's going on. Lubrication system. This is something that is new. The oil pressure is electronically regulated via the variable displacement oil pump. Pressure control solenoid. This results in continuous oil pressure. And the solenoid is obviously going to be controlled by the PCM. So if the PCM sees different engine loads or different engine speeds, it's going to electronically control the uh, oil pump via this pressure control solenoid. So obviously uh, we're getting really, really fine tuning into what we have going on. Back over here to the lubrication system. You guys can check out the electronic pressure oil regulator operation, how all that's actually working. Kind of reminds me of the six liter uh, gear rotor pump that was in the front cover and the pressure control and that pressure relief, uh, you know, there on the angle. Definitely uh, not the same, but just kind of reminds me of it. Uh, oil pump, here it is. This is what we were talking about. The oil pump is a separately serviceable unit mounted to the front of the engine block behind the front cover. The oil pressure regulator valve is located in the oil pump cover on the back of the front cover. Uh, kind of a tongue twister there, but uh, it's definitely got some stuff going on in here. And by golly, I hope I don't ever have to service mine. It'll be a learning experience. Piston cooling jets located in the same spot they've always been. Oil cooler. Pretty much looks the same. I don't know, they probably have updated something in it, but uh, I can't believe that it's going to be interchangeable between years. Oil filter adapter definitely looks different compared to the 11 through 16s and the 17 through 19s. Uh, airflow, if you guys ever wondered how this all works, uh, air comes in through the air cleaner, goes into the turbocharger, 
the exhaust drives the turbocharger so as the air goes in it gets compressed and because it gets compressed and squeezed it gets hot and then it gets thrown out of the turbo and goes into the charger cooler hot and leaves much 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 cooler and goes back into the engine through the lower and upper intakes and go into the valve covers and uh, displaced evenly into each cylinder so uh, definitely well here's a different look because we have reversed intake flow on these engines so this is kind of from underneath the uh, charger cooler would be like would be right right here and so that cold side duct all the air goes into the engine through the intakes and then goes down into the valve covers you guys saw up there and then goes into the cylinder heads into the valves this way so the intake valves are all here and the exhaust valves are all inboard so it's like I said reversed than what we're accustomed to on on the other vehicles uh, airflow intake side we have a new math sensor uh, with a little humidity sensor now incorporated and it is going to be again fine-tuning everything uh, that we have going on in there and is actually going to display a engine air filter warning message when uh, this TCIP is detecting that we have a restricted uh, flow of air going past it so make sure to stay up on those messages so that you guys know what's going on exhaust gases air management you guys can see uh, where the intake was here we have the exhaust going out of those ports going into the turbocharger driving the turbocharger finishing its job and going out the cobra head and down uh, through the downpipe out the tailpipe you guys can see the CCV box here and everything and it's all of its flow and what that's all um, you know essentially doing haven't really seen that flow before exhaust side airflow SCR DPF a lot of stuff going on in the exhaust new air filter here's that new math that I was uh, telling you guys about um, this is kind of a a different uh, math the air intake system includes a math and IAT sensors integrated into one unit the assembly uses a single edge nibble transmission or a scent protocol to transmit data to the PCM totally different type of sensor some math IAT sensors assemblies incorporate inlet pressure and humidity sensors this is one sophisticated piece of measuring equipment uh, we did not have this in the past and this little protocol here that they're sending information on um, uh, or how they're sending information is is getting very fine-tuned to what is going on for these trucks a PCM is making some big calculation intake throttle body using this for EGR flow lower intake manifold you guys can see the flow there again you guys can pause this and, and and check this out I know this is going to be a long video but I wanted to pack all this information in here because it's really really good uh, for all and uh, you know here's a question I get again is there a filter in my 2020 crankcase vent no there's no filter this is what it looks like inside guys the vapors are routed into the intake ducting at the lower intake right before the turbo inlet this unit is serviced as an assembly there's no filter in here so i know we talked about the screws and everything but in here there's there's just no filter guys so um maybe they learned something we don't need uh, a filter in these ones like we did the others and um from really what i think is they shouldn't be having filters anyway because they just uh plugged up and that is what's driving a lot of uh, our oil leaks, in my opinion. Glow plug system. I don't even think 6.7 needs glow plugs. But for emissions, we have to make sure our cold starts are as clean as they can be. And that's what we use these for, glow plugs. They're right here. PCM controls them. They literally glow. They look this color right at the tip in the cylinder. Um, and it is all just for starting. The glow plugs do not need service like spark plugs. That's not what they are. Um, they are a starting aid, a, an emissions 
a starting aid, and that's all they're there for. And they only come on uh, if the engine oil temp is below uh, a certain temp, and uh, if it is up to operating temperature, the glow plugs will not even come on. So if you've already driven your vehicle and you go into a store and come back out, you don't have to do a wait to start. That goes for the 6 liters and the 7.3s and the 6.4s, the 4.5s, the 3.2s, the 3.0s, all of them. You don't need to. Uh, that air in the cylinder and the metal and everything is already heated up enough to create that, that heat needed to combust the fuel. So glow plugs, hey, baby, it's only for cold starting. Turbo, air management. You guys saw my video on the turbo. I did not have this book or this information prior to me making that 2020 uh, turbo disassembly video had I known uh, when I first saw this I said by golly I would have known how to exactly take that part out that I did not know uh, how to take out in the video uh, you guys saw me kind of struggling with that but I mean come on it was a uh, uh, pretty cool to learn and well here's a picture of it after the fact so again another picture of the turbo Electrical actuator. We have a filter up in that turbo now and actually we use coolant uh, to cool the turbo and it has it showing you the port right there that mates up with the block. Uh, EGR cooler. Again, it's an emissions component. Uh, we try to obviously reduce the oxides of nitrogen and uh, with the EGR cooler uh, that is made feasible. So EGR valve and actuator, EGR cooler. You guys can see the flow through the cooler. I haven't had a 2021 apart haven't had really any problems with 17 to 19s at all uh, those ones don't really have plugging up problems because of the cores are different air management intake this is getting a little a uh, little technical with the fuel system and um, what everything is is doing um, but I like the pictures and the components to you know if you have something to look and to go on you know it helps you understand everything better uh, when servicing it in my eyes because a lot of the stuff they don't tell you what they change you know we're just learning as we're going and a truck comes into the shop and I've never taken this off before I'm, I'm learning on this guy's truck right now so this really really helps um, myself and others you know paint that picture um, when trying to service these things in the shop so fuel system injectors remember we talked about this 36,000 psi this is what is making that pressure and shooting it to all eight fuel injectors but the cleanliness people please please don't be silly just change this right here this should be changed every 15,000 miles I don't care what the owner's manual says you guys need clean fuel please please um, and drain your fuel water separator every month right there old logo should have the new logo in there they need to change that um, but I think they're just emphasizing the B20 capabilities of the power stroke. Um, but know that uh, you want to be running, if you're running biodiesel at all, make, make sure it's good biodiesel. Um, we don't want to have any problems with, with these parts in the high pressure pump because that is what's going to be causing our metal to metal. We're going to go uh, talk about a CP4 failures, CP4.2 failures, and what that means for uh, us power show guys um, and how we can prevent that. That's going to be a video I'm going to be excited to talk about. <clears throat> High pressure fuel system. We have a left left fuel rail, right fuel rail. Left fuel rail is the most important. Uh, it has a bunch of line fittings, uh, but not as nearly as many as the uh, other side, uh, and has uh, three big components in it. We have a PCV, an FRP, and an orifice that is located internal to the rail um, and uh, has a special purpose uh, routing fuel uh, to the other side of the engine. Here's another picture of the lines, spider lines, I call them, everything. Oh, here it talks about the, the left fuel rail is longer due to the presence of a diverter. The diverter allows the pressure equalization for both fuel rails, uh, resulting in equal pressure at all injectors. So I've had issues with this has became dislodged and we've not been able to achieve full, uh, full FRP during uh, the high pressure fuel test. Getting a little in depth into the fuel injectors, 
really breaking it down and what the internal components of those and these IQA numbers and what these really mean. You guys can check that out and read that. Um, new PCM, new Tricore PCM. Thank you, Bosch. Um, got a different V refs and a different bunch of calculating uh, strategies in these new PCMs. So just making our, our job uh, way, way tougher uh, uh, when trying to diagnose these. Here's a little bit about the scent sensors. Um, it is uh, a lot of a lot of info. You guys may not be interested in that. Map math, all of these electrical uh, sensor cals and how they read. Coming over to it says miscellaneous sensors, knock sensors. Talking about the sensors here in the exhaust, the PM module sensor sensors on the engine, PCM uh, outputs and inputs, actuator again, we got the VCV in the high pressure pump. What else are we gonna show us here? Electrical for the reductant dosing module. We don't have a standalone TCM anymore, so that's in the PCM, so that's actually, uh, that should be taken out. That's that's not right. Uh, what do we have here? Exhaust, exhaust flow, kind of already went over that. Uh, what else, what else, what else? More exhaust stuff, more exhaust stuff. How EGTs read, the regeneration process. Um, going over, I am making a video talking about uh, regen and what it is meaning and, and what are some of the things you're going to be seeing in the instrument cluster um, and I want to I want to well round you guys in the information so that this this uh, truck uh, you're going to know like the back of your hand and uh, I, I, I want to reiterate again I know this video is going to be long but please please stick through uh, play this while you're eating dinner or something or, or you know cleaning the car just put me in and just let me talk don't necessarily need to see um, but uh, I just want to get this information out to you guys so that you know uh, what we have going on uh, it's not a mystery uh, being educated about these things is the biggest biggest point that I'm trying to get across to everyone reductant system completely different compared to our 11 through um, 16s, a little similar to the 17th or 19s, but they change it up a little bit for 20. We have a um, reductant quality module, reductant pressure sensors now that we did not have. Back to the exhaust, it's showing uh, inside view of what the, the exhaust mixer, the swirl uh, component that's going to actually uh, help mix the DEF with the exhaust gases so that we're evenly distributing it through that catalyst and achieving that r reduced NOx level. Special tools, you guys have seen me do the rear crank seal and the front crank seal. I'll, I'll try to make a note and link those in the, in the description. Uh, fuel injector removal, specialized tools to remove the fans. Front crank seal again, valve spring compressor, pressure tester for the EGR cooler. I've never used that one. That is the end. I want to thank you guys so much if you have made it to the end. That's pretty much my truck right there. This again, uh, kind of a long video, a lot of information uh, for the 6.7. I think anybody uh, would appreciate this info uh, if they had to uh, take their truck to the dealer and thought they had uh, suspicion or they wanted to know uh, more about the vehicle, talking about it with their friends, talking about it on the podcast. This is what we do is talk about these trucks and, 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 and educate one uh, to be uh, a better power stroke owner because I hate seeing them come in uh, on the hook and upset and crying because their poor owners who spent 80k for these trucks can't just do a do a oil change and the needed maintenance required. Thanks so much for watching. Tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section. If any of you guys have got a hold of the 2020 Coffee Table book, let me know in the comment section. If you want to get on the podcast, let me know. I got to get some more guys in queue. But uh, yeah. 
Thanks so much. We'll catch you guys later. And remember to like, comment, sub, share. I'll catch you guys all next time. See you.